Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It's one o'clock. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful, is it Thursday today? Wednesday. This beautiful Wednesday, the last week before we open our schools. We hope you and yours are safe. We're gonna get through this module four together. And um, if we can please first make sure that our attendance is recorded. We have a chat log. If you can please write your name, uh, your division or school and your email address so we can put that in our records so everyone can get the credit, especially if you are pursuing that, that credit. Okay, we have a few more joining in. And here we go. Let's go, let me get our, our slideshow up and running. Okay, this afternoon, we're gonna be going over module four. Uh, we just completed module three this morning and that was covering diverse learners. And uh, we're gonna take you now to family support with technology, okay? I'm joined here with uh, Ms. Gwen Heiminglow and Ms. Joanne Chargaloff. We will be your IC team. And let's go see what we can do to get started. We have a few housekeeping rules. This is actually a webinar, so the microphones are already turned off but you might want to keep that in mind when you hold your own conferences it helps to minimize the feedback and allow for clearer conversation okay attendance we mentioned it earlier for those of you who just joined us please make sure that you um, write your name your division school and your email address in our chat log so that we can we can um, record your attendance for for credit or for for um for hours towards uh, recertification. Okay, questions. There is a button on your menu bar, Q&A. So if you have any questions that pop up throughout our presentation, please record them there. And after the presentation, we will address everything we can. And uh, if there are some that are out of our scope, we will be sure to get the answer for you uh, and get that out on maybe on a Q&A, on a fact sheet. Okay, the chat log is a great way to record some of the resources that we have. So before we end the session, feel free to get a copy of that chat log for your records. Okay, this session is also recorded. This is gonna be our third session on module four, but it also will be recorded. And if you wanna reference that, it will be uploaded and shared with administrators. So please work through your administrators to see um, if you need a copy of it. Okay, usually give, uh, it takes a couple of days to get it uh, uploaded and shared with administrators. But please, if you need a record, I'll copy the recording for your records, for your archive, for your reference, work with your administrators. And finally, we have a huge challenge in front of us. Well, the entire world is trying to, to figure out the best way to approach education. And uh, together, collaboratively, uh, let's come up with some solutions. Okay. Before we go into module four, we just want to preface that with a reminder about the models of learning. Okay, there's a nice video by um, our, our deputy superintendent that he shared, it's about 30 minutes long. Prior to, to, to all our modules, we share that, but we wanna give you a brief overview of that. So the models of learning, we have three options for our families. We have home learning uh, online, we have home learning hard copy, and we have the traditional face-to-face in a rotation, right, with cohort A, B, and C, right? So I'm hoping that you and your schools were able to um, collaborate and figure out the best schedule to serve these three modalities, okay? And some of you may already know your assignments for that, okay? Item and expectation for all three models, uh, regard, regardless of which um, mo modality our families choose, we wanna provide them a student academic plan we also want to have the progressive implementation of the models of learning and the common lesson, de lesson design parts and guidance. Okay, for that personal academic plan, right? We wanna make sure that the students schedule a model description, the syllabus expectation for that model, grading policies, the, PS, the, the priority standards and the, their email accounts and the office hours are all included, right? Regardless of which modality, hard copy, online, or face-to-face, -face, 
we need to get the at least these communicated clearly right here's a sample schedule right so this could be someone who might be a family that might be working home learning online it could be someone that's traditional face-to-face -face. we have less contact hours and to create a little bit of a routine it's nice to come up with this uh, sample weekly schedule this sample was taken from a special education um, workshop or a training a couple weeks ago so please feel free to to model after it right it gives families uh, and students a a nice schedule to continue regardless if they're in the classroom or online or following a hard copy curriculum All right the progressive implement, implementation of the models of learning this is probably going to be the biggest foundation of what um how we plan our school year is broken up into three phases on that first phase it doesn't include like straight away a, a test or assessment we're looking to make that connection with less contact hours the relationship between our families are going to be the most important piece for success this school year we want to make sure that we have those open lanes of communication we want to understand the dynamics of our families so we can make sure everything's in place before we go into curriculum. So once we get all of those expectations, those protocols, the, the, the modalities of communication ironed out with our families, then we can go into second phase, all right? Please take time with first phase. When we go into second phase, that's when we can start introducing curriculum. We can start introducing instructions and, and um, learning activities and experiences, right? Our biggest challenge is how to recreate these rich learning experiences over the modality of hard copy curriculum, over the modality of online early, or how do we recreate it when we only see our students every three days, right? The big one is gonna be establishing that first phase, making sure we have rich, positive relationship with our families, right? And then the third phase is gonna be moving forward and gaining momentum. We're gonna continue to, to collaborate and polish our practices and leverage the, the strategies and resources that really prove impactful, right? Understand that these phases don't go clearly phase one, phase two, phase three. We may, depending on what happens to our school year, we may have to revisit phase one again, right? Who knows, maybe um, their smartphone ran out of minutes and now we're gonna have to go through a landline. We're gonna have to reestablish those connections uh, and that's a clear possibility. So understand that these, these phases may be cyclical. We may be in phase one, phase two, then go back to phase one, all right? But uh, ultimately we're trying to progress throughout the school year, okay? For common lesson design parts and guidance, right? We wanna look at parent, uh, clear parent student information instructions. We, we know that when, when we work with our colleagues, right? We have all of these acronyms and teacher jargon that, that like, uh, because we have the background knowledge, it's very easy to communicate. We have to take a step back and realize that our, our parents may not be on the same page as us if we use that kind of language. So we need to, we need to really think carefully and not make assumptions on, on how we provide those instructions when they are um, doing some of these learning activities at home, right? We also wanna talk about the content and also how the activities play out. So those instructions going home to parents, we wanna be clear, we wanna be uh, concise, right? Not too wordy. Make sure that our parents uh, exactly know step-by-step step what they can do to support the learning at home. We're not expecting parents to teach these explicit concepts by themselves, right? But we do wanna give them guidance on uh, how much time they need to spend, right? And uh, which assignments need to be done prior to which assignments. Right, so those, those uh, clear instructions need to go home in, simply, in simple parent-friendly, student-friendly language, right? We wanna also ensure that they understand why, why these things are gonna be important for their development, all right? The content, this is a big piece. We are the content experts in our, in our classroom and sharing some of that expertise can prove very beneficial and making sure these skills and concepts are mastered. When our families understand the, the value of our curriculum, we'll have better support, 
right? And richer relationships and richer dialogue to make sure our students reach all of their expectations, right? We can't assume that they know it, right? We've been in the classroom for many, many, many years, and we wanna share with them a brief understanding so that they can also leverage that, that, uh, that strength, okay? And we know that we have rich learning activities in our classroom, right? Our challenge is to recreate that in the home learning environment or recreate that over the, less, the, the fewer contact hours we have. So these activities that may happen when, when they're at home, right? When they're not visiting us or maybe they're online, we wanna make sure that it's clear and concise and, and it's uh, uh, enough guidance so that families can find success, right? And of course, we wanna communicate our office hours so that when they do have questions, when they do, do need clarity, uh, they're able to reach us uh, via email or via phone, right? Whichever lanes prove, whichever lines of communication prove uh, most effective, right? And in the bigger picture of this, right, we talk about parents, teachers, and this mindset, right? We, we are now strong partners with our parents. And this mindset, uh, the, the growth mindset is going to be a big um, uh, piece that we're going to be focusing on because no one's ever done this. So we want to make sure that regardless of the challenges, we gather our evidence and in collaboration with our colleagues and our parents, right, we continue to improve and make sure that we provide that guarantee and viable curriculum, right? And then that's a, that's the synopsis for, a, or that's the overview for our, uh, that video that our deputy superintendent shared. And for module four, our objective is at the end of this session, participants will be able to identify, develop, and implement structures and supports that will ensure success right, with our learners. And then this partnership is between student, teacher, and parents, right? Students may have very little experience with distance learning. We know of so many teachers that are starting to include, that started including that, but there are still quite a few students that may have never uh, submitted an assignment online or e on email or access any of the online curriculum. So we need to make sure that we, we plan for everyone, not just the ones that already have the experience, right? And then we, we need to recreate this rich learning experience over this distance. And then the parents and guardians, we need to make sure that they're clearly involved because without them, we're really gonna struggle this school year, right? That relationship is gonna be that phase one where we, we pour in a lot of energy to make sure we have strong footing, right, moving forward. Education is a partnership between student, teacher, and parents now more than ever. And uh, we like this quote, uh, I've heard this from multiple educators, right? People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So we start with that rich, positive relationship. Regardless of the curriculum, we can get through it together. Okay. With that, uh, Ms. Gwen Kamiglo is going to take over and share with you some, some important points on how to begin that relationship. Yep. Hi, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. And before I start, when we're looking at ways to improve parent-teacher communication, I want to give a disclaimer. We all know that you are all proficient in establishing parent-teacher communication. What we're asking you to do right now, or what I am doing right now, is we're just going through a little nine ways that we might have to adjust because of the situation going on right now. Just to kind of like shift gears because we have so much going on and these parents have so much going on. So it's kind of saying, don't forget to be warm. Let me put on my glasses here. Okay, do you guys see the circle there? Okay, so one of the things to do, and I'm gonna use me as an example so that nobody gets offended. Now I know my persona by you know reevaluating myself that I have a persona that's kind of, you know, can come off really strong, not only with the tone of my voice, but my physical presence. So during these times, as we enter this new mode of instruction that's going to happen just around the corner, I need to make sure that no matter how I'm communicating with my parents, whether it be through email, text, or in person, I have to make sure that their interpretation or their perception is that I'm being warm that I'm offering engagement. You know, um, a little kindness goes a long way. 
Um, being warm, of course, will let down those first impressions that we have of each other, it'll also open up to saying, okay, you know, I've heard of this woman, this timing law. Uh, she ain't as bad as I thought. Uh, be positive. This is a whole new venture for everybody, for the, for, for the teachers, the students, and the parents. So as we're communicating and trying to um, establish an effective communication, Orlando, you switched my slides, sir. Well, first, I it's okay. You guys will give him a break on that one, right? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we've got to make sure that we spread a little positivity. Um, when we're contacting the parents and the guardians, you know, rather than start off with, okay, here's the agenda, here's our expectations, here's our, you know, this is where you can reach me. Start out with a little something positive, you know, Ask them about um, their selves and their life. You know, just try to be a little friendly. Little positivity goes a long way because, and you'll notice when you look at this, being warm, being positive, foster a sense of trust. It's like we're scaffolding, huh? So while we're being warm and being positive, definitely they're not gonna be hesitant to have that trust with us. We're already fostering it. We've got to let the parents know that we've got your child and your interests at heart. It's in our heart. So when we're speaking to parents, we want to reassure them in any discussion that things are confidential and um, we always have your child's interest is the best interest at heart. Communicate often, all too often, and I'll use me as an example. And I'm, you know, if you want to admit it, admit it. Sometimes we tend to communicate at the beginning of the year, when issues come up, um, when events come up, but we don't have that consistent communication that will continue to foster a chain of communication that's beyond that surfacy um, dialogue or relationship. So don't just communicate when issues come up. Um, Make sure that you communicate just not when there's problems or, you know, d don't just do it on high alert. Um, on those Fridays that you have, kind of check in. You know, it could be a small thing. However, you're going to do it. Hey, how are you? This is Mrs. Timinglo. Just checking in of you. If you have any issues, any concerns, you know, email me, call me, you know, let me know to reach out then you want to make sure that how you're communicating with the parents kind of think of it as IEP not every mode of communication is ideal for each parent because of their demographics because of their life situations some may prefer communication through email um, through the google classroom uh, bulletins some prefer that one-on-one -on -one. some prefer by video but identify the parents and see which mode of communication works well with them and um, makes them feel comfortable. That'll definitely make your effort and your dialoguing with these parents go a lot smoother. So, you know, for example, if you choose somebody who just is not as into technology, they're going to come back frustrated. They're going to come back frustrated, which is going to lead to your frustration in the communication. So if that parent is comfortable with the phone, with uh, an email letter, communicate with them that way. That'll make your, your, your situation a lot easier. Next slide. Okay. We also want to make sure, now we got, always got to remember, as educators, really the reality is parents really don't have to participate in their child's education. And in order to buy them in, we need to make them feel valuable, especially right now, you guys. Any little contribution they give, any positive comment, any contribution they give as a parent, uh, whether it be through follow through, whether it be through volunteering, whether it be through resources, whether it be through their consistency to communicate with you, acknowledge it, acknowledge it and um, encourage them to participate and share their strengths. Um, 
that's making them feel valuable and acknowledging their involvement again is a scaffolding answering questions all too often when we're dealing with all the challenges within the classroom we tend to kind of focus on questions that deal with the child's academic achievement or their behavior ask questions beyond that because right now during this situation we really want to establish a rapport to our customer base i'm not saying we're perfect i'm not perfect but we have to think of our customer base and we really need to establish a line of communication that says hey there may be times when we're going to have a breakdown in communication but we want them to feel comfortable to say oh, okay you know i don't think this teacher got me but let me ask again so ask questions about you know how are you doing how's your husband's doing i saw them out there you will be surprised at the questions besides the follow-up questions how you get a little more insight into what's going on in their private life and when you have that you can almost shift gears and kind of gauge your personality and your presentation and the manner in which you communicate with these parents never make assumptions being in the classroom is very challenging and all too often because and i'm only speaking for myself because i'm imperfect and i'm human and because things maybe get challenges we've got to really avoid making assumptions oh shoot i had your brother before yeah 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 you know um oh remember every family there's no cookie cutter for what a family is every family has its own dynamics its own character you know so especially right now you guys we have to be very cautious as human beings not to make preconceived assumptions of any of our customer base whether it be a parent or whether it be a student and you know when you look at this you guys i notice this is a good gauge for us as we're dealing with our peers now i know a lot of you out there know me and have taught with me and we all know my physical presence and the tone of my voice can can be like a megaphone a mega what do you call it a mega megaphone. megaphone of authority this list of nine ways to improve parent teacher communication consider it applying with your peers as well there are some peers that we can speak bluntly with and openly with and joke around with gauge how you communicate with the peers depending on their character and on their needs you know i thought of that because we can't speak you know like i'll speak to orlando any way i want because you know i know his he, his feelings aren't that sensitive but i sure wouldn't speak to joanne in the same manner that i would speak to orlando yeah, joanne is so sweet she's so gentle you know so these nine ways to improve parent teacher communication i feel are very important as we communicate with our peers especially during this time don't make assumptions we don't know what our peer has gone through the night before you know always shift gears our customer base are our parents the guardians and the students but we also service each other so you know these are things to keep in mind okay thank you mama gwen we have uh we have a few resources that we want to itemize uh for the rest of our our presentation here but before we get into that, we want to also try to provide some um, a thought process, right? There may be some common issues that we're going to run into with these three modalities. So we want to make sure that we, we reference at least the most common ones, right? There, there may be more, but if we at least start with these, we can, we can plan for a smoother school year, especially for a reopening. So these are key procedures that are among the most common issues that arise as we launch these three modalities. The first one is, is going to be the website, right? Like uh, many of us may be starting a class website or a school website or a team website. And we want to make sure that our families know how to access this, right? 
Um, I remember when I started in the classroom trying to incorporate more technology and, and online resources, uh, I, I punched up on the, on, I, I wrote on the board, here's the website, and the, the students didn't even know how to turn on the laptop. So, so it was another um, instance where I assumed, right, that my, my students already had the prior knowledge to be using technology. So I had to take a step back and make sure even just to turn on the, the computers, we had to go over that. So with our, with our modalities, something where you, you, um, you know, compile all of your information on a website or your Google Classroom, we need to make sure that our parents and, and, and students have clear instructions on how to access information. The next one is usernames and passwords, right? The login, a lot of these like on Google Classroom or their email, uh, they may need to use a username or a login name and a password, right? We need to make sure that we develop some kind of system or a method to keep this information accessible and safely kept, right? We wanna make sure our students have this, right? I know that when we use things like MobyMax or um, uh, AimsWeb, right? A lot of the time is spent on, uh, Mr. Cruz, I, I forgot my password, right? Uh, Mr. Cruz, my username and my password isn't working. So I, we end up spending 15 minutes in the class, making sure our students log in. Unfortunately, we may not be there every day with our students, or it may be over a distance. So we need to make sure that from the beginning, we have these important information um, saved safely, right, and accessible. We tried putting it in our binder, we tried putting it in our notebook, we always still ran into trouble with using a password. Let's plan to make sure our students have that accessible and safe, safely kept. And also, even though it's safely kept, right, um, we have students that say, oh, Mr. Cruz, um, my notebook has my username and password, but my notebook is in my dad's car. So they don't, they don't, uh, they may not have it as accessible. So we need to also ensure that we provide tech support, right? For these GDOE, all students have available to them a GDOE email account, right? And this GDO, GDOE email account will have a password, right? At Astumo Middle School, God bless Dr. Taylor, right? He's our librarian and he was the keeper of these accounts. So at the beginning of class, I always wrote maybe like 10, 15 passes to, to, to the library so that students could get their email uh, passwords, right? But Dr. Taylor did, what, did, uh, did me a favor, did, actually did himself a favor, right? He granted me access by working with FSAS so that I could be the one, personally, the teacher, the teacher in the classroom had uh, the capability uh, to access their email accounts and reset their passwords when they forgot it. So this may be something that could be very beneficial uh, if you can identify one educator per grade level, or maybe one educator per team, or one educator per content, right? To help make sure that if a student or family does have trouble and they need that password to be reset, right? There is a point of contact readily available to click reset and they can quickly access their email accounts so they can log into their Google Classrooms, okay? Uh, here's a few more things that might arise and, and we need to make sure that we have, we're prepared, right, to address them, right? Submitting work, right? When I first gave out a digital assignment and I said, oh, okay, just email me your, your PowerPoint so I can, I can start reviewing it for your presentation. Something simple like attaching a PowerPoint, saving a file, saving a picture, these are things that we can't, again, assume. And we need to make sure that our parents, our families, our students have the guidance to make sure they know how to, to click on which button and how to attach a file and how to save a picture so that they can uh, work with us through these three modalities, right? They may, be, um, they may have choose hard copy curriculum, but they may have access to internet sporadically or intermittently. So maybe they might be able to submit 
these assignments to you uh, on a weekly basis when they visit maybe a learning center that hopefully should be up and running soon, right? Those are the times that we're gonna make, need to make sure that these students and our students and our families know how to submit our work, right? The formatting, right? Some of our, our educators are very particular on like uh, what to include on each assignment, the, the date, the, um, the class, the period, things like that. We need to make sure that the formatting, right? What font size, what font style will be acceptable, right? Otherwise, Right. I can remember when I asked them for a, a short journal entry and um, without giving that that expectation, I got assignments in different colors like pink and beautiful font that I, I, I had a difficult time reading. So I had to reformat it so that I could better read the, the, the student work that was submitted. So please ensure that you go over formatting assignments. Right. And lastly, uh, routine, right? This goes in with our phase one, phase two, phase three. We need to continue to develop a routine so that students are a little bit better prepared and less anxious, right? If they know that there's gonna be a routine, they, they're not gonna be sitting on their hands uh, worried that another project assignment or feedback is coming and when, when to expect it. So let's go see if we can logistically plan with our colleagues uh, routines. Right, especially in middle school. If we're gonna be having these video conferences with our classes, we have the flexibility of having them in the afternoon after school hours, right? Uh, we wanna make sure that we, we um, collaborate and plan logistically with our, our colleagues so that our, our, our students and families won't be um, over, over, um, over, over scheduled for these video conferences and no conflicts can arise, right? Okay, and then here are a couple of resources that we do wanna share, right? Um, class and team websites, we're seeing many of them pop up. This is the third week of our training. And in the past two weeks, we have already seen and uh, educators have shared many class and team websites. And they're so rich and beautifully, beautifully um, designed. And it, it shows that uh, we're so, uh, we're pouring our passion, right? Our passion to make sure that all of this is accessible to our families, right? There, there's a, a great website, Weebly. Weebly is a great platform to build a website. You can also use Wix and uh, there's also uh, Google Sites. They're all very easy to build um, a website so that all of the information our families need can be easily accessible, right? The next one, this is one that we're really excited about. We shared screen capture software. So screen capture software is a resource we can use to help share all this information with our families, right? Uh, many, many people are good with just reading directions black and white, but there are a good portion of population that would love to see the instructions in a video tutorial, right? or maybe you want to share the agenda and objectives for this week, right? And this can be captured on video, right? Along with our PowerPoint, along with our presentation, uh, so that we won't need to repeat on Monday, uh, this, on Tuesday, what we did on Monday. We won't have to repeat on Wednesday. We won't have to repeat it to our online learners. If we can capture this video on our screen, we can easily send that out and share that with our families so that if they need to reference it or they need clarification, they can easily just click replay, right? Uh, in, a, in a minute, we'll share with you some examples to give you an idea of the implications it can have as far as streamlining the delivery of rote information, the delivery of tutorials, right? And, and then the beautiful thing is if one educator does it uh, and is um, kind enough to share, we won't have to repeat it, right? I've seen some tutorials on how to attach a, a, a document to an email, and we all don't have to do that, right? We can just get that link and share that with our, our families and it's gonna be just as effective, right? Um, or if you see one and you want to improve on it, you can use this resource to make your own video, okay? And the delivery of these, all right, the, all of this information, uh, many families we've polled actually have a smartphone, right? They have access to internet, on their phone. And on the phone, many of them have a camera. So there's this QR code, right? 
So if you, if you have your phone available, if you can, some of you might be watching on your phone, so you can't do this, right? But uh, when you get a chance later on, you get the slides from your administrator, right? Take your phone, open the camera, right? And take a moment and bring it to the screen so that it can see this, um, this box, this square. And a QR code should now lead you to a YouTube, um, to a YouTube video, right? And it'll show you, um, it'll lead you to a YouTube video. And that YouTube video is actually a QR code tutorial. So if you take a few minutes to watch it later after presentation, it'll guide you on how to make your own QR code. So this QR code can be saved and put on your syllabus or maybe a school flyer so that when we share this with our hard copy learners or share this with our face-to-face -face learners or send this home to our online, uh, our online learners, right? They can easily access your class website, a video, a picture, a worksheet, right? On their phone so that they can easily say, okay, I got it. Instead of having to say, okay, the website is HTTPS backslash backslash www. I, I don't know how many times I've written out on a board and the students still make an error punching in, punching in the website address. This, this QR code allows you to, to just use the, the phone camera to access information that you have online, okay? We also have, oh, okay. So um, we usually share this over Zoom, but we've seen that the, the video kind of gets choppy. So I'm on the chat, we're gonna post two links. One link is for this video that this is a screencast uh, recording sample sample recording and we're gonna share this one so um, on the chat if you can click the link uh, and we'll give you maybe three minutes to watch two sample videos one is from me right and one is from an educator uh, from Jose Rio she was kind enough to share a sample video that she created on screencast uh, software uh, Joanne um, who could, could we give credit to the educator who do you know Yeah, that would be uh, Georgie Cruz. She's a math teacher um, with uh, this, our special props uh, uh, group. So yeah, Georgie and Georgie Cruz. Thank you. Shout out, Shout out to Georgie Cruz. Cruz. So yeah. let me stop sharing. We're gonna post the link and it will give you about three minutes to view that, okay? So let me stop and then let me pull up the link. Link copied, and then chat. Okay, so there's the first link. It's on the chat. It's, it's only 30 seconds. So click on that, and you can get a sample of what screen capture software can do, right? We can go over the, the beginning of a lesson so that you can focus on juggling all the other responsibilities we have in the classroom. It kind of like relieves you of having to repeat things that you have to, right? Uh, that we do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, okay? And then after you watch that, there's a second video. Share, copy. Okay. That's the second video. So we'll give you three minutes.
If you're having a uh, difficulty, I'm not sure how to answer this. It says a previous YouTube um, I looked at keeps showing up. Maybe we can try closing out that previous um, YouTube that uh, video you were looking at and then try again. And if that doesn't work, you know, we'll, 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 we'll ask so we can get a solution. But try um, closing out the previous YouTube and going back to the links that Orlando had given you and see if that works. Okay, so that's been a few minutes already. We're hoping that you were able to see a couple little samples. If for some reason uh, the, the video link didn't work, we'll provide that in uh, along with our uh, PowerPoint slides so that at a later time, maybe there might be a conflict while, while Zoom is running and the audio happening with the, uh, with the, the YouTube videos. So, oh, um, we'll address the subtitles in, in a little bit, okay? Uh, there was a question I just saw in the chat, but let me let me just uh, share with you first the the website itself. Okay, uh, so let me share the screen here. Desktop. We're almost done with the presentation. Let me just we'll just jump back on it from the current slide. So this is actually the website that we we used, right? This is the resource we used to create that sample video, right? Both of them. Right, the one with me going over the agenda objectives and even had subtitles on the bottom, right? Screencast-O-Matic. There's actually two websites that we reviewed. There was Screencast-O-Matic and Screencastify. Both of them work, both of them have a free version, but we actually prefer the Screencast-O-Matic because you actually have a few more features available from the free version and the paid version compared to Screencastify. So um, we'll post them, um, uh, the, if you wanna take note of the, website address there. We'll also post that website address in the chat before we end the session, All right? There is a free version which allows you 15 minutes of video recording at a time, right? The paid version, there's like two versions of paid. I think it's like a dollar and change a month for one version. The other one is like $4 a month, right? Um, but they, they have much more features like the subtitles included, right? So that's why, um, uh, between uh, my wife and I, we said that, hey, this is going to be a great resource and we invest a little bit of money to get the paid version because we know how much more beneficial it is to have those little features, especially like the closed caption. We have a great number of our population that are English learners. And, and even when we share like video clips in the classroom, they really love it. Like, Mr. Cruz, can you turn on the captions? Right. They want to see the subtitles so they can follow along a little better. Right, so Screencast-O-Matic, right? Uh, record that as, a, a, as one of the resources that could really help us uh, this school year, All right? Okay, uh, there are a multitude of apps and uh, these aren't the only ones. So we just wanna share with you some ways or some, some, uh, some of the software that's actually available out there. Most of them, are, most of them have a free version. Some of them are, are paid, right? But, we want to make sure that uh, that you know, like all of these ideas, these are just some of the ones that were shared by previous participants. So we want to make sure we also share that with you, right? Uh, we want to keep it simple, but we also know how creative many of our educators are. So um, if if you want to start exploring some of these, right, these could be really beneficial in, in uh, the approaches of creating that rich experience over distance. Okay, Joanne's gonna take over. She's gonna share. We created this document that, that could help us organize. So here's Joanne. 
Okay, thank you, Orlando. So yes, um, as we start planning to communicate with our parents, here's a, a quick start guide that you could use. Uh, and you really, it's just a, a, a sample, a template that you may use. You can change it up for yourself. Um, the family support for using technology te uh, checklist that you use along with the quick start guide. So as you go down the list, you're, you're you're jotting these notes down uh, in ways of your, I'm sorry, how you will be communicating with your parents. So let's go through some of the questions. How will we establish initial communication? Consider direct phone calls, the flyers. If you create uh, some kind of parent letter, you can um, also uh, use the QR code and, and, and um, have that letter uh, scanned. Uh, and the parents can, and you can just reach the parents that way. Um, another uh, next question, how will we continue uh, routine communication? So again, um, uh, Orlando had mentioned Fridays uh, could be that planned day where you start communicating with your parents, but but you want to do that throughout the week and, and you have to kind of make that a routine uh, just don't wait on, on uh, Fridays. You could do it through emails, a simple phone call, your parent letters, through your school websites, um, a blog post. Um, next question. What could happen to cause a breakdown in communication? What can we put in place to resolve three break, uh, these breakdowns? Uh, implement procedures to address lost passwords. And, and, and that's something that Orlando had mentioned um, when he was going through the key procedures. So yes, have a backup plan. Make sure you have a binder that has all the kids' emails and their passwords um, just in the event that that happens. Um, what platforms can we use to maximize our digital presence? Uh, you can create a YouTube channel. Your again, your school websites, um, your your team websites, your grade level websites. Uh, those are great ways to reach your parents. Uh, also, just a simple phone call. So when you do, when you use the quick start guide, use the checklist to make sure that you've um, got all these points down and as you make the the plan so um uh, a few weeks ago this the special ed department had shared their family support plan and that is a great tool to to use a guide uh if you will um check out the the um their website and you can download their uh already made family uh communication plan you can use that as well otherwise you can get with your team uh, uh get with your grade level team and and create your own communication plan okay thank you Okay, so just like in best practices, when we revisit the objective, we're hoping with our, our presentation, we we're able to equip you so that we can identify, develop, and implement structures and supports to ensure success with our students, right? We have this, um, this, uh, this juggling act, right? Having the curriculum, instruction, and assessment uh, in partnership with our students, teachers, and, and parents, right? So we're hoping, right, we have at least a little bit of confidence built so that we can start planning and getting everything organized for the reopening and the progress throughout the school year. Okay. Okay, uh, we had a little bit of a follow-up, uh, activity for follow-up, but um, I'm not sure, we're still trying to schedule this follow-up. We know that a lot of the, um, the, the schools are really, really ge gearing up and we don't want to take away time from the work you're doing at school. So um, please uh, keep an eye out. Keep an eye out for, for the follow-up session. If we do have a follow-up session, right, well, uh, it might be in the afternoon and we're hoping that you can come up with some ideas to draft, right, to draft a plan on how to reach our families for that initial contact, right? So this, would, this is what we were going to discuss on the follow-up. 
And in the follow-up session, we're also hoping to, to walk through, right, how to use some of the softwares that we presented, the, some of the research we, we presented uh, today. Okay, sure. You know, you guys, while you're developing this plan to establish that communication, there's one thing that's very important is that our colleagues that you're working with, that collaboration is going to be your survival this school year. There, um, look at the strengths that each of your colleagues have. There may be somebody who is very high tech, has that knowledge like Orlando or Joanne, or there may be somebody who is really good at putting together information and writing maybe a dialogue or a script that can be added to whatever, however you work with your team or your grade level to create this line of communication with just the basic SOBs to start the beginning of the year so that there'll be um, some clear communication, some consistent communication. So consider working. I mean, we're not saying you have to, but during this time, consider working with your colleagues and just remember that this collaboration is really going to equal, make things easier, collaboration equals, you know, our survival this school year. So if you're one of those individuals, you know, may, you know, who like working alone, consider that. Or if you're, if you're one of those individuals, maybe like me, who just loves the control, give up that control and collaborate. You know, we need each other this school year. Orlando, would you like me to go over some of the questions? Uh, sure. Let me, let me first. Okay. All right. Orlando's going to post a link to what Joanne shared with. Okay. Um, one of the questions that uh, is, um, I think it's to the screen, uh, screen o -matic. Um Orlando, how long did it take you to, to, um, to produce unlimited under 15 minutes in the free option? Let me, let me, let me share. Okay. So with the screen cast o -matic, uh, that's uh, to create that that video. It was it was really the length of taking the video. You click record, and then it uh, when you're finished, you click stop and you click done, right? So uh, the the beauty the 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 recommendation at least with best practices is to not spend too much time doing retakes, right? Um, it's a very simple software, and you just you just click record, and then you narrate what you want to narrate. And then you click stop and then you click done. So I, I literally did that in, in the span of two minutes just to create that sample. The free version allows you 15 minutes to a 15 minute video. So you can create a 15 minute, as long as a 15 minute video for the free version. Um, like I mentioned, there are some versions that, are, that, that cost a little bit more, but there are, there are features that are available on that one, like the subtitles. So the subtitles, it actually recognizes your, your speech. However, with my accent, it butchered almost every sentence I shared on that short video, right? So I need a little bit of speech therapy to articulate my words a little better, right? So, so, uh, so, so speech, your speech therapist out there, I'm a client, right? But even with the misunderstanding of my, my, my uh, dialogue or my narration, I was able to go back and then actually type what I said instead, right? If I spent more time, it had been formatted a little, a little better, but I just wanted to give you a sample that even with my, uh, my accent, right, you can, you can correct it, type it, and include that as subtitles on your video when you share it with your families, right? right? So um, I'm hoping that could be a piece. We're hoping that could be a piece in helping you, right, find success this school year. We'd hate for you to repeat all the instruction on Monday, right? To the next, all the instruction again on Tuesday. And then even on Tuesday, that one student would be like, uh, Mr. Cruz, what are we supposed to do again? I'm like, oh, click replay, click replay. You can see it again, no problem. So we're hoping that helps. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna get the link shared for the, um, the quick start guide. It's a live document so that you can change it uh, if you see fit, right? If you wanna add something or omit something, use that to, to how, uh, if to make it fit your practice. Okay. Now, there's another question here while Orlando is doing that about the cost of this membership. Um, and he's going to explain that later, but for, 
for now, before, you know, um, before we all go and spend on it, you know, it would be wise to consider, you know, working with the free version first and, you know, getting comfortable with it and um, knowing how to navigate a little. And then you'll be able to make a more comfortable decision whether you want to buy that membership. I know we've all done this as teachers. You know, I love Easy Test Maker. Um, I love, um, what was that one where we did the survey, survey monkeys and all these links. And I would always, because I'm so gun ho purchase these things. And then when I'm in there, I've already paid, but I'm teaching myself how to navigate. So consider becoming familiar with it before, you know, you actually put in your hard earned money. Um, Orlando has had a lot of practice and I think he tried, to, I, I hoping the boy, I hope, I day, I day, I hope I, he did. I hope he tried the free version first, and then he's going to say um, how much he paid for it, which yeah, is I nice think. because he's got, he, he and Francis both use it. Orlando, how much did you, you spend? So um, my wife really liked it. <laughs> we just clicked buy, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm sorry, but... But um, it was, um, it's uh, the, the paid version. There's one version for like a dollar and change a month, right? But because um, uh, we saw that it could, it could really, really help. And my wife started already trying to make videos. And here's the nice thing, right? She has, hmm, I don't know if it's with their user policy, but um, she wants to share the resource with her team so that she has videos for her team, right? She teaches uh, seventh and eighth grade and her, her team of teachers, the five of them, want to create videos for their team and they're going to use just her account. There's no reason for them to, to all have an account, right? When they're serving the same students. So they're going to collaborate and make videos together. Right. And um, the cost was $4 every month. Right. I think, uh, I think there's a, I think you pay like um, all together for the year, but the cost came down to $4 a month. So you can have features like being able to highlight the cursor, like the mouse, right. And being able to, add words on the screen and also to add um, subtitles, the closed captioning. So that, that, that one comes at their, their most expensive version is $4 a month. Wow, that's really a nice rate. And I'm glad Orlando brought up, you know, as we're working together, remember when we said we're looking at communication and we, you know, we're, we're so focused on establishing that communication freely and openly with our customer base. Let's not forget that we as peers are also our customer base. So that collaboration will always equal our survival. And I think I remember um, seeing a lot of names here that I've taught with, you know how we used to share Edge of Fun, Easy Test, and how we used to share the link. Now is the time you guys where we need to apply those nine reminders of how to communicate with each other and let's help get each other through this school year that's a very nice price orlando i was expecting it to be a little higher yeah, yeah. It, it's free for him because he his wife he's using his wife's uh, <laughs> account <laughs> Well, I think we answered that. Are there any other concerns that we can address to you at this moment before the follow-up? Something about the document, will this be implemented in all sorts of sets? Just Everything that we're presenting to you guys is, you know, the other modules that you have, modules one and two, and everything prior to this is, is a scaffolding effect. So you're going to personalize it and make these things that you're learning from the modules something that is workable for you. Um, what we're presenting is not a mandated thing by the board, but we all need this, including I, we all need this, everything from all the modules, just so that we can have a smooth start to the beginning of the school year. You know, everything from Google Classroom to Microsoft, and that's why I'm saying lean on your colleagues. You know, we all have questions. And there are times when we don't want to ask the questions. I don't have that problem. I ask all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. Acknowledge, hey, I have a question. 
kind of hesitant to ask it, ask it anyway. Ask it anyway. Reach out to your colleagues who will be able to get you over some challenging moments. We've got some very talented um, people that we're working with, some very gifted people. Don't feel inhibited by your, knack, your lack of ability to um, handle all the technology that, is, that we need to employ into our instruction. It's just technology, you guys. It's just a computer. Restart, go back, reach out to each other. Uh, the QR code, uh, we're, he's going to provide the QR code, which is really nice. If you had a, uh, one of the questions here is if you had a MacBook, can you also screen record using QuickTime? Orlando's going to answer that because you know he has an ongoing affair with Apple. <laughs> you know, mine is kind of surfacy. Okay. I have right. my I have my Mac Pro, you know, my Pro, but that's since 2010. So Orlando, are you okay. ready to answer that question? Yes. Okay. Okay, so there's a the the link to the QR code for the video tutorials on the is on the chat now. I'm hoping that's gonna be um helpful for you. And then I just want to verify. Okay. Oh, this is a shout out to Ezra Chan. Ezra Chan is actually my 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 former student. <laughs> and I'm glad that she's an educator. <laughs> Yeah, Mama Gwenda was like, yeah, I was like maybe like what 13, 14 years ago, but um, but yes, uh, the the if you do have an Apple uh, laptop, a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, the Quick Time, the Quick Time, oh, 12 years ago. Thank you, Ezra. <laughs> so, so um, the MacBook Pro does have software, Quick Time software. It's called Quick Time, and you can record your screen using that, right? So it is built into the Mac already. Uh, but but I do want to share with you that um, the Screencast-O-Matic allows you to have a the webcam uh, vid video right of you uh, on the corner while you're going over uh, <laughs> over the your your um, either tutorial or your um, your PowerPoint presentation right so at least even your students can can especially when they want to read your lips as you're presenting right instead of just listening to the narration. Uh, the the screencast-o-matic and others also give that option to to put your your video of a webcam in the corner of your your video. Okay. Thank you. Just the eval. Okay, so that concludes our session today. We thank you for your time. We appreciate all the you know, all the, um, the attention that you've shared with, you know, everything coming together, we know it's gonna be a challenging year. So please, um, we're gonna leave this chat open or this session open for about 10 more minutes in case you want to uh, get a copy of the, um, of the chat log for the links that we shared with you, right? And then as you exit, there's a, an evaluation and please take, the, take a minute to, to complete it. We do go over them uh, uh, together at the end so we can prepare, better prepare on what we can do to help uh, our district in, in reopening and, and progress with progress with the school year. Okay. Thank you. Um, before you guys all leave, um, Joanne, Orlando and I are going to place our email addresses into the chat. Mm -hmm. You guys, we're a team. We're all instructors, we're all teachers first. If you have any question, um, we're either going to answer it or you know, reach out to resources to provide you with the answers that you need. So um, please feel free during this time to contact any of us. And we're, you know, we're here for each other, you guys. So, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us for any type of question. If we don't know the answer, we have a lot of resources that we can direct you to or discover the answer and share it with you. And um, well, Joanne put her name. You guys all right? GNT Timing Low, that's me, okay. Um, be safe. Uh, let's have a, no, let's not say let's. We're going to have a very positive school year.
and uh, be safe, you guys, and enjoy the school year. And don't forget to take care of yourselves. Let's see, Orlando, your email? All right. We can say farewell. No, teacher. You're taking the link. You have to think for the email. When you exit, you guys, the eval link will pop up. Okay, take care, be safe, and have a great school year, you guys. Thanks, you guys.